Hey, this is OXDF, and today I'm looking at the day six challenge from the 2022 hack event. Uh, the challenge is called Privacy Isn't Given, um, and it's a smart contracts um, Ethereum blockchain challenge, and uh, I'm really bad at this stuff. So this video is really just meant to orient, show how to orient yourself when you're given these kinds of challenges and to think about what you're actually trying to do. So um, I'm given this instance, right, this uh, introduction right here. I've got a wallet, private key, and public key, as well as a contract address. Um, those are going to live on a blockchain on an instance up here that I've spawned already myself. So each player is going to have their own instance with their own wallet, etc. Um, there's also this uh, block of code here that's the Solarium um, smart contract code defines the contract called not so private. Um, and there's this blockchain 101 section down here. Um, which I'll walk through a bunch of these steps as I get it set up. Although a lot of it isn't actually needed. Um, we'll jump over here to, I'm in my VM now, and I'm gonna, on the Chrome web store, I'm going to go ahead and add to Chrome MetaMask. Um, and in installing this, I'm going to create an account and uh, get it all set up so I can connect to it. So we'll say get started. Uh, I'm not going to send the improvements. We'll, get, we'll create a wallet. I'll give it a password. Not super important since I'm not actually storing money in here, but um, passwords don't match. Let's try again. There we go. We'll create. Oh, we don't need a video. We don't need a secret recovery phase. We're into MetaMask. Now, what I'm going to do now is add my network, just like they told me to here, um, a manual network. The network's name is going to be HackVent. Uh, the URL is going to be, let me grab this IP from over here. The IP of the instance we're working off of. Uh, the chain ID is leet. Fix that. There we go. Uh, currency symbol doesn't really matter. We'll go with a dollar sign and we'll save this. Um, so now we're in. Now we want to import an account because they gave us an account as well. And we will come here. We just need the private key, which they gave us. And we'll post it in here. And now we have, hopefully, yep, we have an account too here with a thousand dollars on it. Great. So we can we have some money. We have some money to play with. We can move around. Um, we're going to jump over here into Remix, which is the smart uh, contract IDE basically. And I'm going to grab that from the um, Hackvent page here. I'll grab this contract definition. Grab this. Come over here and add myself a file. We'll call it like day six or like hackvent6.sol and we'll paste in this contract right here. Now it's warning us that we're pasting in contracts and that you know, but for a CTF that's fine. But we'll save it. And we'll come over here and we will compile it. See, is it not working? Oh, okay, it's working just fine. Okay, so now it's compiled. Um so down here I can come over here and I can see so this this environment we have to set up next. And so we don't want to connect to um, necessarily these providers. We're going to connect to the injected provider, which will be, um, oh, no injected provider found. That should be MetaMask. Try that one more time. This always can be a little bit buggy. Make sure you're running and you may have to reload the page. Okay, let's reload. Um, I, I did find this to be a little buggy. In fact, I tr when trying to set it up originally, I was trying to set it up in Firefox because that's what I kept primarily using this browser and it, I couldn't get it to work at all. So um, let's come here and compile. Oh, let's come here and did I lose my file? I must have lost my file. Okay. Uh, hv6.sol, paste in, okay. Save, go over here, compile over here and we pick injected provider metamask okay so you see metamask actually pops up and says okay what are we connecting we're connecting account two let's click next uh we will connect that and now the account is set up right here that's cool that's me that's my account um and you can come down here and you can see here's our contract now i deploy the contract so i can actually say like um oxdf was here and deploy this contract and it's going to pop up and actually deploying a contract costs a little bit of money. So I'm spending, you know, what does it look like? It's estimating fractions of a, pe of, a, of, a of a thing. Now, I, it says dollar sign, but it could be Bitcoin or whatever here. I'm spending fractions of a coin on this, but I'll click confirm. Um, and it's transaction zero has been confirmed. Um, 
don't know why we can. And you can see actually down here, I guess I ran it twice. You can see down here, deployed contracts. There's two different not so private, that's the name of this contract, um, contracts that each with their own address. Um, and I can come down here and I can actually call the set flag function. So, you know, the flag was OXDF something was here or something. Now I can say, um, please subscribe. And I can call set flag. And again, it's going to say, oh, you're going to spend a little bit of money to make that change. Okay, that's fine. I hit confirm. And it looks like it went through. Um, now, there's no git flag function for me to read this. Um, and I don't actually care about these instances anyway, because these are the instances where I created them. Um, what I really care about is this instance that maybe when I spun up my VM or the, my own Docker instance, it, it also creates an instance of the contract and they give me the ID for that. So let's go over here and I'll grab that out of the um, prompt and I'll come down here to this, you know, so you can do deploy or at address. And so I can give it the address here and click this. And now you'll see a third one that begins O seven O E O X E seven eight A E seven eight A, which is what we got here. So this is the instance that I don't have access to, or that I didn't create. And so if I come on here and try to change the flag to like O X D F O X D F and call set flag, um, I will send transaction, and I will confirm that I'm going to pay for it, but I'm going to get errors, um, and it's not. Um, it says transaction failed. This is in kind of small text, so you can't really read it, but it says um, false transaction mined, but execution failed. So I think I basically paid for this transaction, but it didn't work. And the reason it didn't work up here is because only the owner can set the flag. So to actually solve this um, challenge, we're going to look, a little, well, I guess we'll look a little more at the contract first. So the contract specifically has a two, has an address of the owner, private, and has a string, which is the flag um, value. Uh, when you construct an instance, you create, you give it a flag and it stores that as flag and the owner is whoever sent, whoever constructed it. Um, I'm going to skip this for a second. The function set flag takes a flag, but it has this external only owner thing. And presumably it just sets the given flag, to, or sets flag to given flag. The only owner thing though is what's happening up here. And that's where it's requiring that the message sender is the owner. And so basically it means only the person who originally created it can modify it. And that's all it does. Um, and so, you, you know, if you're like me, you're looking at this and kind of going, okay, what do I do with this? Um, the problem is, is that when this gets written to the blockchain, even though it's a private variable and can't be accessed outside of the, um, you know, the, the functions itself, um, it doesn't mean it's not still stored on the blockchain. And in fact, it is, and it's still retrievable. Um, so what we're going to do, um, we could do this within Remnex, but I actually... I, I don't, I'm going to write in Python, so I'm going to come over here and we're going to say, um, go ahead and say tmux so we have a window. Um, we open up a Python terminal. And from here, let's see. So we're going to do uh, import web3. And oh, actually, sorry, we're, no, let's not do that. Let's do uh, from web3 import capital web3. That's what we want. And um, the other thing we're going to need is the is well, we don't need, but we're going to use because I'm going to show it is the ABI file. And if we come over here to our compiled thing down here under the compile, you can see this ABI. And so I just copied it. Um, so if we come here and we say uh, vim ABI, uh, let's see, hv6.abi, and we set paste and we paste that in, it's just some JSON that describes basically the same, the it's the what is it called? Uh, application binary interface. So it's basically saying, how do I interact with this contract? And so we're going to save that. And now up here, we can do uh, import JSON. We can do with open hv6.abi for reading. For reading as f. With oh, for reading as f. Uh, ABI equals JSON dot load F. So we've got ABI now as a, as a dictionary. Um, so we've got the ABI, we got the web three. So now we need to do, first we need to create a connection. So we'll say web three, or let's just make it W three equals, and we'll do web three. Uh, and then we're going to pass it web three H dot HTTP provider. And that is going to be HTTP 
uh, and then we need to get our where's my hack vent page here. Um, with my instance, which is 152.96.7.12, and our port is 8545, like that. Like that. And we can do w3.is connected, like that. And we get true, so we, we've connected. Awesome. Um, so now we can get the, we can fetch the contract itself. So we can say contract equals w3. Uh, eth dot contract and we'll say address equals and let's grab that out of the we have the address from the uh, from the challenge page itself so we can say address equals that and avi equals avi and we can look at this con is this this is a thing oops if I spell it right it's a thing contract so it's a it's a web three utils data type contract object. Um, so we can do things like uh, contract dot address, and there's that value. Um, we didn't actually need to load the contract because even though I just showed it here, um, we can read directly off the blockchain with there's a w3 dot eth dot git storage at, and we need to pass it the address. So we can do contract dot address again. We can just paste that in. And now we can look at the individual blocks on the blockchain, um, or slots, I guess is what they're called. And so this thing has two variables. So if we put in slot zero and put it in here, um, this is going to be the value that's held um, at that point. And so that's going to be the sender's ID, I believe. Um, if we come up here and put in slot one, um, this is hex, hex bytes and it's the flag value. Now it's stored as hex, um, but we can really quickly, if we've been doing hackvent for any period of time, recognize that H, capital H is 48, and V is 36, and 32, 32 is going to be 22. So it's starting with HV 22, so that looks like our flag. Um, and so we can do this, and we can even come here and do, um, I think it's decode, and we now are getting, you know, HV, there's our flag right there. Um, so the point of all this is to say, even when you use private variables, that does not mean those things are private on the blockchain. They're still completely readable off the blockchain. They're just private um, in the sense of the code itself. So um, call in the video there. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.